Greetings once again to the Movie Recap Corner. Today's feature is a 2017 horror and mystery film called Rings. If you're one of the heroes who follow me, let me know by putting this emoji in a comment. A video is being displayed on a monitor in an airplane that is about to descend. A man becomes anxious when a woman sitting next to him initiates a conversation. He quickly informs her about a videotape that allegedly causes death seven days after viewing. A week ago, he encountered a woman who gave him the video. He discovered an old VCR and watched the tape. After it ended, his phone rang and a girl's voice informed him that he had seven days left. Following the call, everything turned bizarre. His nose suddenly starts to bleed and he rushes to the restroom. Another woman appears beside the first one and she informs her about the man. As he is in the restroom, odd occurrences begin. The second woman knocks on the door and inquires if he had duplicated the tape, revealing that she too has seen it. Suddenly, the eerie video starts to play on all the plane's monitors. Black fluid seeps out of the restroom and the man panics attempting to escape. The plane starts to plummet as a girl with long hair emerges from the monitors. Fast forward two years, Sky spots a VCR at a bazaar. Gabriel comes over and promises to purchase it. The vendor of the vintage items informed him that it was owned by the man who perished in the airplane crash. Gabriel is later seen attempting to repair the VCR when an old tape unexpectedly ejects. As Skye prepares to depart his residence, he inquires if she'd like to view the tape with him. Due to her haste, she departs, leaving him to watch the tape alone. Initially, the tape refuses to play, but as he lights a cigarette, the VCR springs to life. He observes the peculiar tape, which features a woman brushing her hair and the reflection of a girl with long hair. The woman is depicted leaping off a cliff. Upon the video's conclusion, Gabriel receives a call from the girl, informing him he has seven days left to live. A fly emerges from his cigarette. He approaches the window to kill a fly and notices the rain falling in the opposite direction. Julia is in bed listening to Holt narrate the tale of Orpheus. They nearly share a kiss, but his alarm interrupts the moment. She advises him to pack for college. Holt's dad loads his luggage into the trunk, insisting they must depart. After bidding farewell, Holt drives off to college. Six weeks later, they converse via Skype. He updates her on his classes and informs her he'll be home in a week. His friends suddenly appear and whisk him away to a party. The following day, she waits his text. That night, she experiences a vivid dream about Holt that swiftly morphs into a nightmare, causing her to awaken in a scream. She receives a call from Holt, but it's Skye on the line when she answers. Skye's face distorts as she warns Julia that Holt is a marked man, as the girl is coming for him and cannot be deterred. The call ends abruptly, and she attempts to call him on his phone, but he doesn't answer. Julia gathers her things and sets off to find Holt. As she drives, she continually leaves voice messages for him. The following day, she arrives at his campus. She knocks on his door and, finding no response, she enters. She discovers his phone lying on the floor. Holt has received text messages from Skye, instructing him to meet her after their biology class. Julia retrieves a key from his board and checks his schedule to determine when his class is. Later, Gabriel is observed delivering a lecture. He is their professor. Julia enters the class and immediately draws his attention. After concluding the lecture, Julia approaches Gabriel for a chat. Gabriel informs her that he doesn't really recall Holt and suggests she move on as Holt might have found someone else. Unconvinced, Julia follows Gabriel. She notes the floor he disembarks from and takes a different elevator. Unable to select the same floor, she uses the key she found in Holt's dorm room. Upon exiting the elevator, she notices a TV with a camera mounted on it, recording everyone who enters. She comes across a book by Gabriel about the mystery of Samara, the long-haired girl from the videos. On the same floor, Julia discovers a room filled with distorted pictures of students, including one Holt. In the room, she witnesses Skye arguing with Gabriel. Skye complains that Holt hasn't been answering his phone and insists that Gabriel assist her since he initiated everything. Skye reveals that she can sense Samara and is aware of their actions. Gabriel advises her to return home and wait for someone to watch the video. Julia spots several screens displaying countdowns, one of which bears Holt's name. She chases after Skye, questioning her about the call and Holt's whereabouts. Skye assures her that she can assist her but needs to show her something first. They enter Skye's residence and Skye promptly settles down to her computer. Julia notices Skye's phone ringing. Holt is texting her and Julia responds to his message. He inquires if she's with Skye while Skye is preparing a copy of the video for her to view. Holt warns her not to watch the video. Skye realizes that Julia has her phone, leading to a scuffle. Skye pleads with her to watch the video, but Julia resists and hides. Sky desperately begs for her help. Suddenly, the video begins to play on the computer. Sky destroys her computer in response. For a moment, she believes she's outsmarted Samara, but then her TV starts showing the video. She unplugs it, but it turns on again. Samara starts to emerge from the well and Sky smashes the TV as well. Samara continues to come out of the TV and Sky is at a loss for what to do. Samara lifts the screen and comes after Sky. Sky tries to escape, but Samara relentlessly pursues her and kills her. Julia hears the screams and peeks through the keyhole. Suddenly, Samara appears at the door. She unlocks it, and when it opens, Julia sees Skye's body on a chair. She rushes towards the apartment door, but realizes she needs a key to exit. Julia approaches Skye's body to retrieve her keys and is horrified when she sees her face. She unlocks the door and Holt appears at the entrance, 
asking her what happened and if she has seen the video. Julia informs him that Sky is dead. Later that night, Holt calls Gabriel. The professor is aware of Sky's situation and informs him that people have started to drop out of the viewing circle. Holt asks if he still has someone to watch the video for him. Gabriel assures him that he will find someone to watch it. Holt apologizes to Julia for not informing her, but explains that he didn't want her to be involved. He had watched the video 12 hours after Sky when Gabriel invited him to participate in an experiment. The professor had told them that it would prove the existence of the afterlife and the tape is a gateway to it. Holt explains that after you watch the tape, you have seven days to find someone else to watch it and then you're safe. Julia is angry at him for getting involved in such a thing. Later, she wakes up next to Holt and sees a handprint on his back. Julia gets up and watches Holt's copy of the video. It's filled with disturbing and surreal images. It ends with an image of the well. The phone rings. Julia receives the seven days call. She has a vision of a door and when she touches the handle, her hand gets burned. Holt wakes up and she tells him that she watched it. When Gabriel calls, he tells him that she'll need someone to watch a copy of the video for her. Later, they are driving to meet Gabriel when Julia sees a bird crash into the window and they nearly have an accident. Holt doesn't see the bird. She gets out of the car and finds the bird flapping on the street when she almost gets hit by a truck. Holt pulls her away just in time, but the bird is no longer there. Upon their arrival at Gabriel's place, Holt informs him that Julia was marked on the first day unlike the others indicating a change in the curse. As they scan Julia's hand, Gabriel admits his previous understanding of the tape and the experiment was incorrect. He advises Julia on what she needs to do to survive, but she is reluctant to put another person in danger. Holt persuades her to make a copy of the video as a precaution. However, when she attempts to do so, Gabriel notices that her version won't copy. They realize that her copy is a larger file than the original. They review the video and spot the bird Julia saw in the car, which Gabriel says shouldn't be there. They head to his office to get his equipment. He examines the video and discovers data contained in the additional still frames in Julia's copy, essentially a video within a video. Holt prepares to watch the video with her, but Gabriel suggests it might be intended for Julia alone. She convinces him to let her watch it by herself. He holds her hand. The video is significantly different than before. She describes what she sees, a clock, a cross and a flood, and a girl. She sees a burning body, a door, and summer at the end. Gabriel states that those images have never been on the tape before. He also explains that in some cultures, burning the body releases the spirit. Julia recalls seeing the cross before and shows them. Gabriel tells her that is the place where Samara was buried. Julia asserts that it's where they need to go and suddenly the phone rings. Someone has informed Gabriel that the police are on their way there. He decides to stay back to talk to the police due to his guilt over Sky's death. Before they leave, he gives them his entire research on Samara and the tape. Julia and Holt drive to the church where she was buried. She says that the images on the tape or Samara's story, which she wanted heard. The girl was abandoned as a child and no one knew where she came from. When she was adopted, they realized that there was something evil inside her. They tried to kill her, but Samara survived seven days at the bottom of the well. Her body was discovered years later. However, Julia doesn't know why her body was taken to the town where she was buried. She has another vision of a pregnant girl that was on the tape. They arrive at a motel and get a room. Julia sees the pregnant girl on a picture and asks the owner about it. She tells them that the girl disappeared 30 years prior and that she doesn't want to talk about it further. The two of them go to the church and walk into an AA meeting. They look around, but when they don't find something they think would help, they leave. Holt asks a man about the church and why it closed. As he's telling him that it happened after a flood, Julia sees a flock of birds showing her to the cemetery. Meanwhile, Gabriel is packing up his stuff when he notices something. He takes another look at Julia's palm print and tries to call them. He can't reach them, so he decides to find them. Gabriel leaves Holt a message at the mark on Julia's Pam and actually in Braille. Simultaneously, Julia and Holt are at the cemetery looking for Summer's grave. Julia finds an unmarked one and has a flashback about it from the video. She calls Holt over and listens to some kind of sound coming from inside the grave. Holt finds her and Julia tells him that Summer is there. They open up the grave but discover it's empty. Julia suspects that someone has relocated her. She notices an inscription inscription inside the grave and crawls in. The inscription reads, She will find you, Julia. Suddenly, she gets trapped inside the grave and hears a noise behind her. A video starts playing on her phone. Chains appear in the video and suddenly materialize on Julia's arm. She gets pulled through the grave up to the well. Suddenly, Holt rescues her. It appears that she had another vision. A dog starts barking at them and when Holt informs its owner that they're searching for Samara, he reveals that he's aware. The man directs them to Burke's house. Upon their arrival, he tells them that he found them breaking into the grave. He questions if he should take them to the sheriff's office, but Burke assures him that he can handle it. Burke invites them in. They sit down for tea, and he inquires how they discovered her grave. Julia explains about her vision that led them there, as well as the vision she had inside. Burke shares how the body ended up in their town. Their priest wanted to give her a proper burial, but the town nearly got destroyed as a result. Holt realizes that the flood was caused by her. Burke confesses to Julia that he also believed that Samara was trying to communicate something to him. He too was pulled inside the grave and experienced her horrific visions. Subsequently, he lost his eyesight, which he found somewhat relieving. The priest requested for her body to be moved. 
Before they depart, he cautions them against looking for her and tells Julia that even if she had visions, it doesn't mean she comprehends what they were about. They shake hands and he reads the inscription in braille on her palm, but doesn't disclose its meaning. He advises them to be careful. Holt and Julia leave and continue their search for the body. On their journey, they get stopped by the police because the road has been closed. Suddenly, Julia has another vision of a pregnant girl and exits the car. The cop stops Holt and she follows her vision down the road. It leads her to a crashed car with Gabriel inside. Julia rushes over to him and he wakes up. He attempts to tell her about the inscription on her hand hand as Holt is running toward them, pulling her aside just in time before a pole can crush her too. Gabriel passes away. Later, Holt brings his bag and mentions that Gabriel wanted to tell them something. Julia expresses that the girl wanted to communicate something to them as well, that she's linked to Summer. She insists that they need to return. In the hotel, Julia confesses that she can sense her pain and suffering. Holt departs to fetch some food, leaving her alone. Julia revisits the video and discerns the significance of the ring at the beginning. Concurrently, Holt enters a diner and takes a seat next to the motel owner. He inquires about the girl in the photo. At the same time, Julia returns to the deserted church and gains entry. She immediately proceeds to the church bell and observes water beneath it. She pounds on the ground and realizes it's hollow. Julia dismantles the flooring and uncovers a trap door underneath. The woman is informing Holt about the girl. She reveals that the girl simply disappeared. Julia descends under the church and discovers a room. She spots the pregnant girl's sweater and a bird cage she recognized from the video. Julia deduces that the priest can find the girl there and suddenly hears a noise behind her. When she turns around, the girl vanishes and Julia experiences a vision of how the room looked in the past. There's a banging noise on the door in front and she opens it. Julia shines her light inside and a vision of the girl reappears. She finds chains on the floor and markings on the wall indicating the number of days the girl was imprisoned. She calculates that it totals to eight and a half months. The girl was carrying Summer almost she was held captive. Meanwhile, the owner informs Holt that they never discovered what happened to the girl. She also discloses that Burke is the priest. Holt departs and Julia arrives at Burke's house. Julia tells him that she understands the visions and questions him about the priest. He queries her about what she knows and she shares her discoveries about the girl. Julia asserts that the curse will persist until she's liberated. Holt returns to the motel and finds her missing. Burke reveals to Julia that he was convinced he would sire a child who would revolutionize the world. He demonstrates to her that he voluntarily blinded himself and restrains her when she attempts to escape. Julia discerns that he's Samara's father and that she remains his captive because he relocated her bones. Julia attempts to flee, but is unable to exit the house. Burke extinguishes all the lights and searches for her. He informs her that she's the twelfth individual who has sought Samara and that she can't bring her tranquility, but would instead unleash chaos on the world. Burke locates her and strikes her. Simultaneously, Holt is sprinting to his house. The priest is pursuing Julia and declares that he won't permit her to liberate Samara. He had chained the girl up because she was attempting to murder their child, and he admits that he should have allowed her to do so. They engage in a struggle, and he tumbles down the stairs. Julia experiences another vision. She follows a light to a room, and upon opening the door, she sees numerous things she had seen in the video. Julia navigates the house following her visions, unable to comprehend what Samara is trying to convey to her. When her nose begins to bleed, Samara shows her where she is interred, prompting Julia to start tearing down the wall. Meanwhile, Holt breaks into the house and hears Julia upstairs. He searches for her throughout the house and reaches the stairs where he discovers something on the floor. The priest is still alive and knocks him out. Julia breaks through the wall and uncovers Samara's remains. Burke reaches her as well and begins to strangle her. Samara materializes on Julia's phone. Julia experiences another vision in which Samara pleads with her not to abandon her. Samara emerges from Julia's phone. Burke spins around upon hearing her and she restores his sight. He finally gazes at her and succumbs just like the others. Holt regains consciousness and locates Julia. She informs him that it's not over yet. That night, they are observed incinerating Samara's remains. Julia declares that she's free. Later, Julia is showering and Holt finally listens to Gabriel's voicemail, which reveals that the inscription on Julia's hand is in braille. Holt locates the scan of her palm in one of his books. Meanwhile, Julia notices that she has a broken callus on her palm. She picks at it. When she steps out of the shower, Julia starts to choke and pulls strands of hair from her throat as well as a hair made sack. A fly emerges from it. Julia looks at herself in the mirror, then has another vision of Samara, warning that it won't stop. Holt deciphers the braille inscription from Julia's hand and before he gets to the final letter, the computer malfunctions and sends the video to all of Julia's contacts. When the translation is completed, it displays the word rebirth. He calls out for Julia. She is gazing at herself in the mirror and when she wipes off the vapor, She's transformed into Samara. If you're one of the heroes who follow me, let me know by putting this emoji in a comment.